12 minutes all it took was 12 minutes to convert a thrilling semi final of a world cup goes wide is safe behind excellent running south africa still in this match into the greatest farce ever to be enacted in cricket to go from 22 runs in 13 balls to 22 in 7 to finally 22 in one ball without a single ball being played cricket was being laughed at and what truly pisses me off is that all of this could have been avoided but they didn't because of money this is the story of the day greed killed cricket so our story begins late in 1991 south africa had just come out of its 22 year exile from cricket due to its apartheid laws and was slowly beginning to regain its cricketing presence still the chances of them playing in the upcoming world cup to be held in australia and new zealand seemed minimal it was something that um, you know we could only dream about being part of that very first icc world cup in 92 and going to australia and new zealand was something immense firstly because the time frame was too small but more importantly because apartheid laws were still not repelled in south africa for those of you who may not know apartheid laws were a series of laws and legislations that were passed to segregate and discriminate against blacks mixed races and people of pakistani and indian origins they couldn't marry white people they couldn't vote and even forced to live in designated areas for not often appreciated in britain is the fact that before the diamond and gold industries started the influx of colored labor south africa was a white man's country there the white man is the native not the black still the african national congress the party led by nelson mandela had lobbied that south africa be allowed into the world cup and the icc agreed on one condition they wanted a positive outcome on the referendum to end apartheid it was a referendum in which 2.8 million white south africans were going to determine the future of 22 million people of other races the problem was that this referendum was to take place during the world cup tournament so a compromise was reached south africa would play in the world cup but they would be sent back mid tournament if the referendum didn't succeed the fact that there was a referendum going on in south africa so we were not yet a democracy because we were told as a team that if the referendum is no we will actually have to we will be ejected from the tournament it was halfway through the tournament so 22 years of cricket exile and possibly the last few games they will ever get to play on an international stage absolutely no pressure right it was that this could be our last game we could have to go back home so we just kind of played and enjoyed every single game they defeated the defending champions australia in the opening match and amidst glorious runouts and breathtaking knocks south africa against all odds had made it to the semi finals but whether they actually got to play the semi finals was to be decided in the referendum to be voted just before the semis and in that referendum 68.72% people had said yes apartheid had ended and the country was reborn never never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another the stage was set for the south african cricket team to win it all and bring it home as the perfect gift for the inauguration of this new south africa and so started the match sydney cricket ground the venue for england semi final against south africa south africa won the toss and in a shock to english players commentators and crowds decided to ball first i know what you're thinking what is the big deal well the big deal was that there was a miraculous rule figured out by some genius to deal with rain interruptions it was called the rain rule now according to the rule in case of rain the least productive overs from the side batting first were to be removed so for example if you played 10 maidens in the first 50 overs and then rain reduced the chase to 40 overs then now as the least productive overs would be those 10 maidens where no run was scored 
the target would remain unchanged throughout this world cup teams had met with tragedy after tragedy after tragedy under this rule the most absurd one was when england bowled out pakistan for 74 that means they had 50 overs to score 74 but it rained for 3 hours and according to the new rule england now had to score 64 in 16 overs well at least that match was washed away but there were many such incidences where this rule had practically destroyed games it was like a plague to be avoided at all cost and the south african captain winning the toss decided to take it on when asked for the reason Kepler uh, not too worried about the the rain yeah, it is a calculated risk but well the idea behind this calculated risk was that they had won all the three games when they chased whereas they had lost 3 out of 5 when they were batting first england on the other hand had won 3 out of 4 games while chasing including one against south africa themselves so south africa decided to test their luck especially since they would be helped by another newly minted genius level rule the time restriction now in 1992 the co-host australia was one of the most commercialized countries when it comes to cricket and because of the profit that the organizers were earning through broadcasting rights they had given up complete control over the match timings so in essence a channel on a tv was going to dictate how long a match could go for if they said that an inning should end by this time then it should well if you can't the inning is over either way the clock's just moved to 6:10 on the main scoreboard so if that is a tactic it's worked very well for south africa That's a rule that has to be changed for the next World Cup. We can't have a side only receiving 46 overs in a lot of time. And that's exactly what the South Africans did. By the time the allotted hours were done, only 45 overs were bowled. But the innings 52. was over. And the players coming off the ground after 45 overs. That's a disappointing aspect. They only received 45 overs. Now do understand you. The organizers at any point could have interfered with this and dealt with the financial complications. to extend the time but you know that costs money and how can a trivial semi final of a world cup stand in the way of money right so the english team was deprived of its slog overs and south africa just had to chase 253 in 45 overs to win but the english team wasn't going to take this lying down enraged by the sheer absurdity of this rules they went on full offensive wicket after wicket very tight bowling they were determined to make each and every ball count and finally when the dust settled south africa was left reeling on 131 for 4 in 27 overs still standing in front of this enraged players were players whose careers had got a new lease on life if they had to go down they would go down swinging and swing they did first john t roads played an electrifying 47 runs of 31 balls which was then followed by mac millen and richardson who scored 25 runs in the next 18 balls this left only 22 runs required in 13 balls the match was living up to everything cricket stood for two teams hell bent on leaving everything in the field and then it started raining Sydney cricket ground is certainly quite steady. A very difficult situation for the umpires. It's getting heavier by the second. As the South African players slowly ambled back to the pavilion, seemingly hoping that they could just stay there, just for some more time, the whole world was glued to their TVs, waiting with bated breath, hoping that all the players could come back out again, hoping that they could just start exactly where they left off. A match like this. deserve to be decided on the field isn't it not one person is going to leave the city cricket ground but the broadcasting channel had other ideas they had a deadline to follow you know the match had to end by 10 10 pm by hook or by crook the thing is the competition rules had actually allowed for a reserve day and even though this situation didn't completely fit the norms 
seeing the absurdity of this flawed rule, they could have appealed and tried to make an exception. But the host broadcasters were adamant. The match had to be finished on that day itself. It's quite ludicrous that the captain of a team in the semi-finals should have to worry about such an imponderable. Can one forgive those that invented these rules for spoiling a world event? And so it was that the rain rule was applied. And the least productive overs for England, that means to brilliant maiden overs by Pringle, would now come back and hurt them. And as if enacting a damn comedy, even this information was relayed incorrectly. The crowds and players were told that they still had seven balls left. The South African players walked into the field to meet this difficult but not impossible goal. And just then, they were informed that they now only had one ball. One ball to score 22 runs. They've changed it to say that there is only one ball remaining. Although the official announcement was made uh, just a moment ago that there are seven balls remaining. The crowds went into an uproar. The South African batsmen were in utter disbelief. Even the English captain was arguing about the sheer stupidity of the situation. But none of that mattered. The decision had been made. Amid the crowd's jeers, a dejected Macmillan played the last ball. And the disheartened South Africans, with an equally disappointed English players, started walking back to the pavilion. The clock behind them stood still at 10.08, two minutes away from the scheduled deadline. The deadline had been followed, but cricket had died. Still, in an outstanding show of sportsmanship, the entire South African team had come out to shake hands with the English players. And for the sheer love showered on them throughout this match and the tournament, they did a lap of honour for the crowd. They were disappointed, yes, but rules were rules, they said. Yes, rules were rules. But these were rules made by a broadcasting company. A dream of a resurgent cricketing power had stopped in its tracks. Just so that a channel can earn some more money. This was the story then. Of the day, cricket was killed at the hands of greed.